jailed for sending a resignation text to his former boss. Now, the incident, which sparked widespread outrage, highlights the complex legal challenges surrounding employment rights and the proper protocol for resignation. After spending time behind bars, the young man has finally regained his freedom, raising critical questions about justice and workers' rights in Nigeria. Mm. So from spending two days in police detention, he ended up being charged for intentional insult. Locked up and up in a room with 189 other cellmates at the prison in Kefi before, uh, because he could not afford the bail sum initially 100,000 naira and later 50,000 naira. He remained, uh, he was remanded, he remained there even after the said boss, a politician in this current administration, an owner of a popular photography studio in FCT, wrote a letter to the court withdrawing the charge. And so today, we're joined by Faith Agu Esquire, a seasoned legal practitioner, to shed light on this case and discuss the legal implications of the situation. Faith, you are welcome. Faith, thank you thank very Thank you much. for having me. All right, so for the sake of our viewers, uh, could you please explain the matter of bail and how it applies here? Okay, um, first of all, we have three types of bail. We have the administrative bail, which is from the police station. Then we also have the court's bail. Then later you have the bail pending appeal. Now in this situation now, this matter is not something that is a criminal offense. In the first place, you don't charge somebody for an offense that is unknown to our law. Now when I read the story about intentional insults, it's not an offense known to Nigeria law. So taking somebody to court, even to the police, and then getting the person arrested, I, I, I believe the police and the enforcement agents are supposed to know better. In the first place, it's not something that should even get to the courts, not to talk of getting arrested or getting um, um, jailed. Mm. So that is one of the, the major issues of this matter, is that the matter is not even an offense. Now, the second part, when it comes to bail, um, over the years, we have issue of... Um, Getting bail being very stringent. They'll tell you to get your bail bond, uh, shorties. And this has made a lot of people, they'll stay in jail for a long time because they are trying to process their bill, you know, for an offense that is very minor. So that is another issue we face in Nigeria. Do you understand? So um, I just think the guy was wrongfully detained mm. and he was wrongfully jailed. And it's, so, yes. So in the case of bail payment, now who's supposed to pay that amount? Is it even supposed to be paid or is it something that is just in lieu of perhaps this person jumping bail? Exactly. Now is the shorty like supposed to drop a bail bond? You can, you can use this as an example. Like for instance, if she's committed an offense, which she often does. I know you're, you're <laughs> just looking for a way to do this, aren't you? Um, and I'm, uh, I'm her shorty. So do I have to pay that amount? Now, it's not in every situation they make bail that kind of complicated. Sometimes when the, uh, when the magistrate or the judge sees that this person is someone that cannot even get a um, bail bond or a short seat, they could just, you know, grant you bail mm -hmm. on liberal terms. Now, another thing is that uh, the process of getting a short seat, sometimes they will tell you get a... Um, um, a level 18 of a civil servant mm -hmm. and all oh, is hard. Many people don't even want to stand shorty these days. Mm. I don't know. I don't. Do you, will you want to stand shorty because of the fear? If the person jumps bail, they will come and hold me or something. So would I be held or would the money I'm paying be That is a fear. That is a fear people Aha, are having good. now. And even sometimes, on very rare occasions, they hold the shorties. That is another fear people have of being shorties in. For a bill. Now, so the team is making it very difficult for administration of justice. Speaking of uh, difficulty, the photographer spent 10 months in prison. He's now been released. Um, what legal redress is, what are the options for him? Um, would he be seeking compensation from a legal standpoint? What, what is there for him? Because clearly this is an unlawful. Uh, unlawful yeah. imprisonment. Yeah. This is, it can enforce his fundamental human rights. It has been breached from the very beginning, from the police station that charged him to courts, to even the courts. 
that held him for an offense that is not known to God, to the law, which is intentional insults. As in, it's not something, it's, it's unheard of. So he can enforce his fundamental human right. There are a lot of organizations, even the Attorney General needs to weigh in on this. There are a lot of organizations that could help him, that could support him to enforce his rights. What about compensation? Mm. Of course, that is one of the things you get when you enforce your rights. You get compensation. You, you get compensation, you get redress, you get the people that breached your rights after going in for it. So those are the things, there's compensation in it. So they, they can't just go scot-free. Mm. So it needs to, and that's one of the issues we're having in Nigeria is because a lot of people don't want to enforce their rights. Many people don't even know their rights mm -hmm. in the first place. Why do you think that is? Is it the fear? I don't, is it fear of, the, of the, law, the law enforcement? Is it fear of the citizens that they are seeking redress from? Or is it the clogged judiciary or judicial system that we have? Everything. Some A together. Yes. Now, when you think of the process of getting justice, sometimes a lot of enjoyments and all, sometimes even monetarily, financially, many people can't even afford, afford it. So this makes people, they just sit on the right, like, they just let it go. But in the first place, there are a lot of things that you should know as a, as a Nigerian, there are a lot of rights you should know. And if, many people don't even know their rights in Nigeria. Mm. Many people don't. You see, a, a, um, for example, a landlord taking a tenant to police station. This is purely civil. When there's a civil matter, you're not even supposed to go to the police station. It's not something, they don't have jurisdiction over it. But many people don't know. So they just swallow it because they're ignorant of it. So the first thing is, I think we should try to educate our, the citizens more on their rights. Secondary schools should be taught about their rights. You know, from secondary school, you should, you should know your rights so that as you're going, you know things that should not be done to you as a Nigerian. Mm. Mm. Civic, civic responsibility and uh, civic uh, obedience. I forgot, that's a civic education. There we go. Mm. Uh, but they didn't teach us human rights. They teach us, mm -hmm. yeah, they don't. No. They teach us uh, social studies. Are there any lessons for individuals, whether employers or employees, to learn from this? Employers especially, I mean. Employers. You don't, um, it's mostly employers, because in this situation, I don't see anything. In fact, there is nothing wrong in resigning via text message. There's absolutely nothing. There's no offense as broken. Now, if the person slanders you, there are ways to go about it. But in this situation, it's not a slander. Now, slander is when, or libel, is when I make a publication that a third party hears. Now, um, a message between two people, there's mm -hmm. no third party involved. Mm -hmm. So it's not defamation. Now, the, this is a, uh, a pure case of the employer trying to intimidate mm -hmm. the employee. I want to show you I'm the boss. I know a lot of people. I want to deal with you. So they, I think they cut through a lot. They cut a lot of processes to get that person in jail. Just really sad. Our heart goes out, but we're so glad he's gained his freedom, yes, is indeed. out and about. And also, let this be a, a call, a charge to, to employers and, and people at a position of power. Um, exploiting your power and mm -hmm. using that to enforce and, and, and subject and, you know, oppress uh, your employees yeah, and, and young people. It's just, it's wrong, and you are infringing on their human rights, and they are coming for you. One day is one day. Well, Faith Agu That's Esquire. That's how we started the show, isn't it? <laughs> Faith Agu Esquire is our guest today. She's talking to us about the photographer who spent 10 months in prison. And she's talking to us about his human rights and you know, what legal options he would take to seek redress.